showed an individual and a team goal. Now what I want to do though is, tar is talk about kind of tying sales and marketing together a little bit. So I think gets, this, this might be an interesting little piece here because it start, starts to get to, okay, not, not always just sales, right? And in this scenario here, there are some interesting things that we might want to um, set targets for on the marketing side that kind of tie, sort of provide the link um, between sales and marketing. So suppose marketing in this scenario here Again, organizations do this differently, but in this kind of classic definition here, you know, marketing is the tip of the spear, right? So they might run campaigns, generate leads, generally um, set the table for the sales team. And goals in this kind of scenario that might make sense for marketing would include what? Things like maybe marketing is charged with generating new leads, or how about a certain number of leads qualify? So not only do we get new leads, but they're actually good leads. They get qualified into a contact or an account or an opportunity. And maybe we want to keep track of the number of opportunities that are created from leads. Or taking it another step, maybe we want to have the discipline of figure out how to, how to model our marketing campaigns and be able to track opportunities that get created from campaigns. You can do all these things in dynamic CRM, but until now I think the, the impact of doing that might have been not quite as good as it is now because we can have this, this kind of this real high level vis visibility for goals and goal progress. Um, and then finally, you know, you might, okay, the, the, if the counts are only part of it, but what you really want to keep track of is revenue generated from campaigns. We can do that too. So, and I'll show you an example of how you can do this. And it's really just limited by the, the uh, you know, the sort of the time and patience you have to set these things up. So what, what I want to show you here is a uh, marketing goal that might be something like monthly sales with information, with, with rec opportunity records that are tied back to a campaign. So, see an example of that one here. Okay, so what I want to do here, let's go back to um, our goals, record type, and let's do this real quick. This is just a, a quick review if you, if you haven't seen this before. This is what I'm going to show you here is not new, by the way, in Dynamic CRM 2011. This has been there um, for, for quite a while, but it's the sort of thing that if, you, if you're not a marketing person or if you never used campaigns, you might not be familiar with this. But if I open up one of these opportunities, I'll just pick one at random, and I scroll down far enough in the new look form here, you'll see that there's a source campaign field. And notice this campaign source campaign field is read-only. I can't just come in here and change an opportunity record. That's by design because you know this is supposed to have some validity. So there are certain ways that opportunity records are created. For example, if an opportunity record is created from a campaign response, it will automatically be tied back to the source campaign. Or if certain types of lead records that have a source campaign are converted to opportunities, the opportunities would be tied back to a, a source campaign. I could do something like go into advanced find and see all of the opportunity records that are tied back to campaigns. Or if I wanted to, if it's important enough, I could add that column to this view. But take my word for it, there are some opportunities in this database here, in, this, uh, in the data set that I've got, that are tied back to campaigns. So what we could do is I could create a, um, a, new, um, a new goal record for something like campaign sales. And let's go to my active goals and let's actually let's do this. Let's sort by goal owner and let's scroll down and I'll just kind of notice here that there's apparently a marketing team at AdventureWorks also. So notice in addition to sales I've got certain records that are assigned to marketing. And notice I've got this rec goal record October campaign sales. I'm going to go through and create a corresponding record for, no for November. So we'll kind of get that time series of goals and goal progress going here. So this will be November campaign sales. And again, I'm loosely adhering to a convention, naming convention for this that I've 
come up with over the last you know three weeks working with this thing. I'm sure it's uh, uh, the the book's not closed on that yet. And I think as you as you start working with this, you'll quickly realize that the you know if you find it useful, you'll create a lot of goals, and you really will need to come up with a sort of a convention for this. I'm going to assign this one to the marketing team. And the goal type, again, this custom thing, this is going to be a marketing team goal. Now, the goal metric here is still going to be the same. This is still sales. This is really the only thing I have here, the way that I'm sort of defining sales in, in our AdventureWorks Corporation here. I only need the one goal metric. This one, I want it for a custom period, and this is going to be November. All right, so again, from 11, 1 to 11.30 got that custom period, and let's suppose this target is, I don't know, half a million. Let's go easy on them. Okay, how about 250,000? Now, what do I need down here? Since opportunity records created from campaigns, they'll have a certain piece of information that identifies them that way, but it won't be the owner. It's not that they're owned by the marketing department. So this is another example of when I need a, a specific record set for the roll-up, not just simply owned by the marketing department in this case. And I'm going to go down here and specify, and I've got one that I've created called Opportunities from Campaigns. So I select that for both the in-progress and the actual. And now what this will do is this will only include, so here's an example of where I don't want to broaden the record set. I want to narrow it. I want to filter out any opportunity record that does not have a value in that source campaign. Remember that read-only field that I just showed. So we'll save this, see if I got all the fields filled in. Should I send it? Nah, I won't send it. Okay, so I ignore that. I've got my thing defined, okay? And if I look down here at the actuals, there's nothing in here yet. I could recalculate it from there. Um, if I go to, uh, let's go sort by the goal owner again, scroll down to marketing. Here's my November campaign sales. There's the record I just created. And if I do a recalculate now, let's see how marketing is doing for campaigns in November. So here we've got some things in progress. I guess I wouldn't expect any to have closed yet. It would be hard to have any, any actuals for November at this point, unless I had sort of pre-booked records. I mean, CRM wouldn't prevent that, but... Anyway, so you can see that that is going to roll some stuff up. And if I go in here, let's look at those. You'll get used to this if I look at the in-progress participating records. If I open up either of these records and I scroll down, so now we're looking at the opportunity, here's the source campaign field. So you can see what that roll-up uh, roll query is doing. It filters out everything except those. So anything that's in here or ultimately something that becomes an actual sale is always going to have something in there. So that's a good example of how you might sort of tie marketing into this. And again, the, the, the general rule is because there's a piece of information on the opportunity record that can, you know, proxy for this is basically a count of opportunities that have that source campaign field filled in. I can create a goal 